How's it going everyone? Oliver Gonzalez again looking at the React performance, a course taught by Steve Keeney. And in today's video we're gonna focus our attention is on this last section, the escape hatches as a way to understand now how do we get here uh, as a way to after that we need to know is uh, if you're going to optimize the performance of something you need to know how that thing work that's the reason why over the couple weeks six weeks we have now look at all of these different topics being able to create now this storytelling and also be while describing all of this capability that they're offering is all this subtle nuance that is behind this as a way to create now this user interface which is after all what now the react allow us to do and understand all of this finicky aspect be able to describe that not only for myself but also for perhaps your team members if you're in a team your PM, your business owners, uh, shareholders, users, as a way to now make all of these complex topics meaningful to others. First for yourself to gain clarity and then meaningful to others. So once we are able to do this, right? Uh, and this is the reason why we are actually take a look at this. And in today's video, we're going to focus our attention in, is on this topic. Uh, as a way to then let it on now move to what we really care about on this course which is now see how we can write is react components in the most performing way possible aka writing our react apps uh, as well so as a way to now describe this quickly how do we get here uh first understand uh, right now i'm gonna make a quick recap of all of this topic uh, and then we're gonna jump to what we really care about which is the life cycle of reactive effects something interesting here when we talk about is events and effect uh, as a way to know how you can use is a code that needs to be reactive in contrast with a logic that you don't need to be reactive, which is an event. Uh, we're gonna talk about that. And also we're gonna put that at practice uh, in removing effect dependency as well. And ultimately reusing logic with custom hooks. So the TLDR of this is, well, after all React allow us to create React UIs uh, using JavaScript functions. We look at how can we now import components, export components using these JavaScript functions, as well as how can we now use the GSX syntax so we can now is interact with the HTML with JavaScript, right? That's what they call this GSX, right? Is this JavaScript syntax extend using the curly brackets as a way to connect to that. And also how you can now is pass down data to these components, how you can render components uh, conditionally, render a list of elements, how important is to use the key for that, as well as the, the recommendation and the, and this is not a recommendation, the, the enforce policy to write your applications, you are, write your components in a pure way because it provides you three benefits. You can run this component in any JavaScript environments. You can catch this as a way to save some computation time. And also it is safe to stop the computation, especially when you are now to uh, reset or resume the rendering mechanism. Mechanism that is now the way how React actually is uh, trigger and state updates in before this up the state updates we need to look at how now react see this component or the architecture how all of these different pieces uh works together uh, by looking at the render tree 
which is the way of how you can now define all of your components, how they relate each other. And this is useful for performance and data flow go through them. Uh, yeah, and data flow, as well as the tree of dependency, which is all of the logic that this component needs as a way to uh, now reuse that logic so they can provide now interactivity, which is the reason why we actually use it is this React component. Otherwise, we're just only writing is a more bullet plates. A we were only write is HTML with more bullet plate code. So uh, in here, the reason behind that is well, in by adding this interactivity which is connecting is your JavaScript functions to the event handlers and then how you can now show some data and update that data per user interaction or for any inputs, whether it is human interactions, like clicking, uh, navigating to a URL, or computer in inputs like network response or uh, rendering an image in the browser. So. Uh, this is the way of so using a state is the way of how you can show this data and update this data. So the way you do that is by now triggering is an state update using the user state and the setter functions, which is now behind the scene is triggering is this rendering mechanism that is made of the trigger, the render, and the commit phase. So the trigger, as the name suggests exactly it detects when this happened and in the render where it say if this happened at the root element I'm going to now is uh, uh, create all of the element using the react create elements okay if this however happens as a re-rendering meaning as a component that trigger and state updates react will call the components compute all of its problem states in logic the gsx logic you're going to store that data and then the output of that function uh it'll be the uh, the gsx if that contains more uh, components it will continuously call that uh, until there is no more components in a recursive way so in this particular process is now when the VDOM is recreated, which is this ideal representation of the UI that you want to keep sync in memory, you want to keep in memory uh, in sync with the real DOM. So this process is known as the reconciliation. And this is what allow us as a developers when we interact with the React APIs to tell which state we want our UI to be and then let React to match that state with our UI. So we don't need to manually act is uh, modifying is the attributes or the DOM elements uh, for that. Uh, React actually do that for us and because they add in some additional information called fibers now the react fiber is this reconciliation engine that it was made up in react 16 as a way to now uh, provide all of these features that we can see now in the react 18 and so on so for example concurrent renderings we use uh, the use uh, uh, use transitions to do that uh, or rendering prioritization so for example use the fur value or use the fur uh, and also we have the ability to stop and pause stop star and uh, resum the rendering so all of this is in interesting to know because this is the foundation of a lot of frameworks out there, specifically like Vue. And not only that, but it is also something that, for example, 
uh, as you want to know is the difference between the VDOM and the shadow DOM. The VDOM is just a programming concept that I already mentioned. And the shadow DOM is just a technology, of the, the browser technology that encapsulate is the CSS variables and it is a style. So with that, now that we know what is happening when the React is recreating the virtual DOM, in other words, is when React re-rendering a component, the commit phase, which is the last one, is when actually is if this was happened at the root elements, because on the previous step I actually create all of these elements, I'm going to now is to append that using the append on API. And you can see the screen. Or if this was caused by a re-render, then I'm going to apply the very minimum necessary change as long as they're different between renderings. So React keep track is the state behind the scenes. So on the after the commit phase, so uh, the browser detects those DOM updates and then repaint your app, your app. So this process and the ability to describe this process is on, is is a is fundamental uh, for me and for you if you're going to actually be a React developers to understand, describe and see how you can apply now all of these concepts to build your UI. So we also look at how can we now is update our states and what happened when we state our update, how we can think of our state as a snapshot. So every time you are updating your state inside of an event handler, this is synchronous code, or you can think that React fixed that state during the uh, within the react rendering okay and also uh the uh, value will be updated the the state variable value will be updated in the next render so i also look at how you can now is queue series of state updates okay which is something useful especially if you're working with async operations inside of your event handlers how you can update objects and arrays in your states the tldr of that is always return is a new state out of that and uh, uh, you can use this imer which is this uh, library that allow you to keep the uh, logic consist uh, in a mutable syntax and then how we can now manage our states which is by creating now this UI, how we can think of UI state or UI change as state change, as a way to say, okay, since with React, we allows to describe with all of these different uh, user interface, okay? How can we actually is match that? What is the React way of doing that? Which is visualize all the different visual state okay and then identify what trigger those uh, state update uh, represent those state with uh, use states which is this representation is okay this is the information that I'm going to that I want to keep track for example or that I want to store here okay uh, then you uh, avoid any non-essential uh, states and connect your event handler with the uh, re and connect your event handler with the uh, uh, to, to, to update your state so we also look at how can we organize our state by following these principles that react provide so avoid any non-essential state uh, avoid uh, or group re group state related together avoid any non-essential uh, or avoid any dupe avoid contradictory states uh, duplicate states red uh, redundant state and uh, objects uh, deeply nested objects in your states 
and also how you can now when it comes to share your estate how it is important to whatever you decide where this estate should live that component will owns that which means that it becomes the source of true of all the other components that use that below that render tree so this is now when concept like control components and uncontrolled components kicks in so what you just described is how you can think your components when you are going to uh, identify is it is capability and the design which means is that is this component is mainly driven by it is state it is called uncontrolled component if this is uh, if the information is driven by it is props they call this a control component again this terminology can change as you see fits uh, but again it's just a way to describe this uh, type of components and also when it comes to actually write your application here uh, how important is to look at the way of how you can think in react okay which is first you need to have is the data model of the ui layer you know uh, this can be whatever this can come from ui designers and the other is uh, from the data models but the point of this is that you need one of them usually the json if you have a well-structured json with the data model usually it now falls naturally through your components so you can create that uh, and then uh, you can also uh, say all right once you get this i just want to first break down the ui into components hierarchy okay uh, if you have the data model it will be much more straightforward because it's actually uh, is share the same state out of that okay uh, or if you for example now one is to uh, yeah yeah for example uh now if you want to uh, okay so once you define is once you break out your ui into components hierarchy now it's time to create an static version of that which is hey let me now is actually define is the data models that is going to pass down through that data through props and uh, create this static version then is when you're going to define which component need an state which is find the minimal but complete representation of the UI uh, the UI state with your state so because when you do this you will choose which components owns uh, that state okay uh, and usually this is something that if that state doesn't change over time frequently that's not an estate mm -hmm. if that state doesn't change frequently that's not an estate if you get this data from these props that's not an estate if you uh, get if you can now compute this data based on it is props or it is a but yeah, based on it is props or uh, state, uh, that's not an estate. What left probably might be an estate. And then when you define that, now it is time to identify where this component should live. Okay? Uh, because once you do that, then you need to add this inverse order flow, which is the parent component that you define your state is going to pass down the state as well as the event handler down then down the, down there to the component that needs to uh, update or trigger that uh, event as well as uh, yeah the trigger that that event as well as to trigger is a state update so this is the process here and because of this uh, and since this particular process of passing down data to all of the different components so the f 
the longer the chain of components where you need to pass all of this data, uh, the longer the chain it is, the more brittle it is. Because you need, for example, hide some elements or remove some elements from the DOM so the user don't want to see that relevant uh, component, then you break that entire change. So states are tied to the position of the render tree in your components. And if you want, for example, is to reset that or uh, preserve the state, we also look at how can we do that uh, and how now React do that by default uh, when it comes to preserve the state or reset the state. But the thing here is that we have now this particular problem called props drilling. Okay? And as your components needs to react to more inputs, or as your state needs to react to more inputs, whether it's human or computer, it didn't make much more sense to use this function called Redoster, which is now allow you to make your state update uh, logic consist and maintainable. So when is now to look at the way of how you can pass down data in this problem called now props drill, props drilling. It is also useful to uh, take a look at now how you can is mm -hmm. It is also look at now how you can is pass data to different components using context. So context here is the way of how you can do that. So by having now this single place where you can store all of this state that you want, the recommendation is that you put this only is one small app, small data set there, or small app level data, whether it's theming or user uh, for authentications or analytics, but only that, okay? Uh, why? Because the way how you provide your, or the way how you now provide this data is by using is the provider uh, as well as the, yeah, the provider, which is the component that actually is going to provide that value to all of the nested components inside of your render tree position and when so react will re render all of those components uh, that use that particular context or, or react will re render all of the children that use that particular components that value change starting from the provider so if you want to avoid any of this kind of uh, performance bottleneck uh, the point of this is, well, uh, you can use some built-in functions like use memo or use callback. The first is, as a way to now catch, is the computation between re-rendering and only when this list of dependency chains that I indicated, uh, you're going to compute this. Similar with the use callback, but now it's to actually catch its functions reference. So when that changes, now you want to update that, and then you reduce is the amount of rendering that React is doing by default when a component uses that context. So all of this is something important to understand, because now that leads us is to the next topic, which is the escape hatches and how you can connect to external system systems uh, that, for example. No, knowing how you can uh, control or synchronize to external systems. So for example, you want to focus an input uh, uh, using the browser API, or perhaps you want us to pause a video, uh, you want to play and pause a, a video uh, implemented without React, okay? Or you want to connect to a server and listen to events, or listen to message. So the thing here is that with this escape hatches, we're going to see how to remember information without re-rendering using the use ref, this particular hooks that are unlike a state. 
it allows us to update that without triggering and re-rendering under the current object. Okay, and this uh, is most of the time used as to hold the timer ID or the uh, yeah the timer ID, the, the timeout ID. Sorry, uh, or to hold a DOM element or to hold any objects that is not essential during GSX calculation. Okay, so we look at how can we use use ref with the timeout ID and he's here when we have now our mm -hmm, is here when we have now uh, this not only the counter but time pass here exactly because we want to handle is this because we want to implement is this okay yeah, we want because we want us to implement is this, and I'm gonna make a quick pause here as a way to use now stack blitz for that, because to me stack stack blitz, because here we're going is to implement now is a stopwatch. Okay, and no. thanks for this, but now I just want to create a new one. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that briefly and quickly. Uh, this be my guess. That's right. We're going to use now uh, the app here. Yes. Pretty much this. Okay. Uh, and then the using is fragment here. So we do al allow this ability to render all of this a uh, child component, uh, sibling component. Okay. Uh, and here uh, we're going to oh, let's okay, going to leave this. Uh, and in fact, let's going to implement is our uh, or stopwatch. Okay. So this is stopwatch. First, we need to understand what is the data that we want to track or that we want to store here. So, for example, well, we need this to actually is um, the current date, or the, yeah, the current time, the time that has passed. Okay. Pretty much is that. Mm -hmm. So the start time. Followed by the set time, start time, the setter function as a way to update this state. We also want is to put this now the, uh, of course, it's going to yell me, uh, me because you say, hey, I'm not updating his account here. Okay, and then now I'm going to show his count. Uh, so this is now start time and then now okay how this is a stopwatch how many time has passed through that which is set now all right uh, use a state which is initially will be zero okay or initially it can be is null all right and when we click here we're going to create now a handler function which is handle handle star okay we're here now that i define is uh, all of the different uh, ui state change which is zero and then counting okay this will be the, the two uh, ui that i want you to be uh, and then you're going to define is now what trigger those state updates here well uh, that is by using an on click that will trigger that uh, identify or, or represent those state change using the state okay which is the start time and now uh, so find the minimum but 
complete representation of your UI here, which is in our case is a start time and now. Remember, we want this to now is uh, put the current or, or the start time, which will be is zero. And then the current time will be now, which is actually counting that, okay, computing that. That will be the do state. Uh, and when we now click here, we want us to define is the logic here. In other words, we want to say is as a way to now show this uh, the initial state, which will be zero. I want you to say, hey, if the start time uh, is different from null. Okay. So if the start time is different from null, I want you to now define is a reactive value here, which just comes like, a, how do you put it? It's like initial time, something like this, or, or second pass, something like that as well, you know? Uh, second pass all right Le this one this will be is just an initial state which is initially zero okay so if the start null is um, different okay I just want to de define the things here uh, so let's say pass. So if the start time is different from null, and the now uh, is different from from null, the idea here is that we want is to now is uh, know the different know how many second has passed, which is second uh, second passes it is the start time all right or in this case it will be is the now minus which is uh, will this is data that we're gonna use as second okay uh, so we can say is now uh, minus uh, start time okay so since this will be is used as second, uh, mm -hmm. so we wanna uh, update that is okay. What this data will represent? Millisecond, start time and now. This data will represent is milliseconds. So because of that, we want now is to divide by one thousand as a way to now show is the amount of second. That already passed. This might be valid. Yes, yeah, so I wait the amount of second that already passed because we are counting is uh, we're starting with this data represent is uh, milliseconds. So that'll be all, right? Here we can show is initially is second pass. I mean is some stopwatch here is this a uh, handle star right now it's not doing anything but that that this is it right so we also want is to now show is since this is an a uh, integer i want you to now show is a uh, fractions or digital decimal points by saying two okay remember this is part of the number API here, a uh, number API browser. Okay, uh, what number API is number primitive? Primitive mm -hmm. is number, okay, which is a numeric type. What in the F? Uh, JavaScript type number or JavaScript global object number. In here, the number type is double precision 64 
bit binary format yeah, and it is capable of storing uh, positive floating numbers between okay positive number okay is capable of storing positive floating point numbers mean value okay mean value remember that after all we are using is this mean value because we can represent this we can represent uh, infinite numbers here so that's why we have this limit we have memory constraint I am limited by the technology of my age as the <laughs> that's a good name uh, I am limited by the technology of my age exactly you know like <laughs> yeah that's a good name bro. I am limited by the technology of my age uh, yeah, that's a father. Um, yep. Uh, but in any case, <laughs> it's a good meme. Anyway, um, from Marvel series. Good. Uh, so here we are, right? Here we are. Okay. So is the smallest positive number, uh, is the smallest positive number, not the most negative number? Oh, that's quite interesting. That can be represented within flow precision. Okay, is the smallest, okay. Is the smallest posi positive number, not the most negative? Okay, interesting. In other words, the number closest to zero. The Eggman script specs doesn't define a precise value that implements are required to support. Mm -hmm. Instead, the specs say must be the smallest non-zero positive value that can actually be represented by the implementation. Exactly, by, that can actually be represented by the implementation. This is because the small IEEE 754 floating points numbers are denormalized but implementation are not required to support this representation in which case number mean value may be larger in practice it is precise value in in mainstream engines like v8 uh, chrome edge no spider monkey used by firefox and javascript core used by safari is this mm -hmm. because mean value is a static property of number you will always use it as numbers mean value exactly and it's an aesthetic because it is uh, it comes with it it comes with it so it's the data that is associated to all of this object whereas the instance uh, is now uh, what you can the methods that you can apply to that data you know what I mean but yeah that's actually that number one slash number two is equal to number dot mean the following code divides two numeric values if the result is greater than the equal of mean value uh, the function is called otherwise the function two is called mm -hmm. But again, the representation here of the number mean value, okay, uh, again, number max value, positive value greater than number dot max value are converted to infinite. And positive values smaller to number mean value are converted to plus one. And here we have with the type coercion. Here we freaking go. Negative values is smaller than minus number max value are converted to mi minus infinite and mean value converted to, mi uh, to minus zero mm -hmm. but that's quite interesting that's quite interesting I'll note although the number is conceptually a mathematical value is always implicitly floating points encoding 
JavaScript provides bitwise operators. When applying bitwise operators, the number is first converted to a 32-bit integer. It may be necessary to use such techniques in very constrained environments like when trying to cope with the limitation of local storage or in extreme cases such as uh, when each bit over the network counts, this technique should be considered when the last measure. That's one of the reasons why, for example, here, uh, when you are doing this kind of operations, okay, so for example, like uh, zero uh, or one or zero point two plus zero point three, uh, I think it is. Mm, yeah, I think it's this. Oh, is okay. Okay, zero point one plus zero point two. It's because now JavaScript has, by default, is uh, trying to resolve this, and because this provides you a a fraction uh, that is not so it trying is what it's doing here is now performing this point to point floating operation. What is this point floating operation? You may wonder. Point floating operation. Mm hmm what is this point floating operation uh, they don't describe anything like no this is the data structure here okay double precision 60 point mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, number part float. Mm -hmm. So the thing here is that now is coerced that integer conversion fixed with number conversion and this is the constructor and the instance and a couple example because this is a time step so uh, the point of this in arithmetic operations Yep, the arithmetic operation, relational operation, equality operator, and bit shift operator, conditional, etern conditional eternity operators, assignment operators, yield operators, spread syntax, comma operators. Mm -hmm. relational operators mm -hmm. if the type if this is the type and the other is this is an instance which is an object mm -hmm. Increment and decrement. The left hand side expression. New, new target import meta super import. 
Okay, but again, the idea here is that because now we are working is with point floating numbers here. Since this is now a number, okay, it has now uh, all of these methods. You can say to exponential is like, hey, I'm going to now pass some property that you can now compute that for me, followed by the to fix as a way to provide now a string. That's right. As a way to provide now a stream with, uh, as a way to provide now a stream, uh, with fixed point notation, mm -hmm. with fixed point notation, as a way to represent fractional, non-integers, fixed point representation. Exactly, but this is fixed point representation, representation de punto fijo. Okay, so that's what we're doing here is that to fix fixed point notation as a way to now indicate how many decimals you want to put it here. That's what we do this here, right? So now, um, count uh, or star. Now it is time for us is to, well, uh, update this. How can we do that? Because at the end of the day, if we're using this ref to get this, uh, or use ref is used for timeout ID, uh, so for example, is first you need to define is uh, that reference, which is the timeout, timeout, ref using that particular hook which is behind the thing is using a closure that my must come from use ref okay and now how the time of a uh, timeout ref that we use here we're gonna say hey if the timeout ref that initially we're gonna uh, set that to null if the timeout set is contains something, or in this case is dot current, which is the heat, the property that contains this uh, a hook, okay. If that if if I have something, okay, or if I don't have something in this case, uh, cases if I have something here okay now I want you to now up clear the interval why is this as a way to prevent any the uh, memory leaks in your browser by adding all of this timer and not able to release that in memory so we got is a clear interval here and we're gonna pass this the timeout ref dot current okay which is great okay and now we're going to assign is that timeout ref uh, to the to hold is the set set interval to hold is the ID of this function that we are emitting that is going to now update this state which is initially is um, a star time or in this case is now set now okay by working with the previous state which is uh, now and I want you to is <clears throat> now update that plus one or we can just do only do this kind of thing right and follow that I want you to do that every tens milliseconds okay uh, that's right this must be is a variable here 
dot current we're gonna hold that reference there uh, this will be initially zero okay and we are now setting is the idea here Uh, no, exactly. We're gonna pass is the date now. You're gonna complain about it. So first, we're going to now set, anytime we start here, we're going to set is the start time with the now, with the date dot now, okay, uh, and the set, set start time with that, and then set dot now with that. So that work as expected, okay, so we start here we see that stopwatch so uh, what it doing what we're gonna do here is that anytime we start that again it will reset that time and so on and so forth right so this is quite interesting as a way to see how now all of these things fall into pieces joins together this is stopwatch uh, we can implement is now the uh, another bottom here which is Hey, I'm gonna call here some days to stop. As I would say, now handle stop. Okay. Uh, we're now here. What I'm gonna do is to say, hey, handle stop <coughs> here. It is, well, this is a function here that I want you to only is clear the interval. Anytime you run this interaction, will you now clear the interval? Timeout, timeout ref dot current, right? So we start this, and then we stop, and that's all. If we want to also is clear out the data that we have, we say is well now set the. Uh, we want to trigger an state update as a way to now clear that and say set now it will be equal to zero so by doing that it'll of course stop that uh, 
or point to nu. All right. So you can see here is to say, hey, this set state action set state action number Argument of type null is not assignable to a parameter type. is by actually using a state exactly by saying hey use a state here that must come is from the type or no mm, okay it's here you put it here. Okay, it's number as a way to now indicate the type of this. Okay, so similar to this. 
this can be either a number or no But again, the idea here is that we are not able is to stop that. You know, where safely is to stop that execution. So this is might be a silly example, but the whole point of this is to see how you can now create is this counter or this stopwatch. Identify all the different visual state. Because in those case is stop, zero, and then counting. Okay. And then again, go back to uh, the state uh, to the zero. Okay, that will be is this. We also need to identify is what trigger those uh, state updates. In this case, a click. Okay, as well as um, how you can represent this information using a state. So, what is the information? What is the data that you want to keep track here? and then the logic inside of this and i made a quick pause here to do this because this is something that you will going to see a lot You know, because it's actually it's processing something data. That's one of the reasons why they prefer, especially when they're adding this. But it's because it's painted too fast. That's what happens. But the point of this couple exercise of a way to look at the stopwatch is how you can use now this, which is a very simple, plain <laughs> and silly project. very simple silly project here but it's now being able to describe what are the power behind the scene but it is like that
I think I already no I'm not okay So if I want to fork this Hmm. Mm, yeah, but the idea here is that you can see now what I'm doing here with this, right? It's actually implementing this particular logic enhancements. So, okay. Uh, and since this actually didn't fork to my... Oh, but it forked... Okay, create a repo. Okay. Stack bliss. So I will need to create, okay. React stopwatch.
got a lot of frogs here. It's like, what the flying frog is this? Eh, uh, that's cool. So now I want to actually is connect that to mm, yeah for that. Oh my god. Yeah, I already forked again. Oh, uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I want to fold this again. Okay. And by doing this. Okay, uh, stop watch. So fork that. Okay. Mm, I don't have any frogging fork that. Okay, create a repo. Um, no, this is the uh, stopwatch, by the way. Stopwatch React. It's like now sending that hook to there uh, and then provide that. Ba, 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 starting the IV. And now we are using this, this web container, which is pretty fucked up. Which is pretty fucked up. So if we reload this, we should be able to see this. No? All right. This is now is private. Okay. Let me delete this. And I love that they put all of this uh, guardrails to prevent you to do fully things. That's right. Okay, there you go. So, uh, yes, after that, I'm gonna use this here, and we'll add now is, well now is to change the readme here. And so we to say, okay, this is good. This is stopwatch. Stop watch in React. All right, I'm gonna get rid of all of this. Okay, this is quite slow, by the way. Holy bro, and I am in a Mac. Pretty two official plugins are available here. 
Okay, you can see it's image flip. There's a way to add this. That's right. Uh, yep. Pretty much is that. What the F is this? Come on, man. It's quite slow because all the things that you need to allow you.
Okay, it's quite slow. It's freaking quite slow. Okay, no problem, no problem. No, no, no problem. No problem, bro, no problem, no problem. In markdown. As you wish it, sir. As you wish it. But the whole point of this is to understand that. Right? And, and I think that uh, was something to look at that. Uh, and that's actually quite time consuming. But I think that'll be good for that. As a way to understand that. Uh, and for that, that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye bye.